The Straw King, Chapter 9 Lulu wasted no time in assembling the winged monkeys. She put two fingers in her mouth and blew a piercing whistle that was so loud it sent Cornelius running for cover. Even the lion flinched. Moments later, a squadron of monkeys in flight, helmets and goggles, descended into the clearing, stirring up a small dust storm with their furious beating of their wings. Right, chaps, Lulu barked as the monkeys folded their wings. It's time to fight. Are you ready to do what's right for your country? It wasn't entirely clear to the scarecrow why the monkey had such authority over her brethren, when many of them were clearly much older and bigger than she was. But the monkeys paid careful attention to her. Why do you listen to her? He asked the nearest monkey quietly. Lulu will be queen any day now, the monkey whispered. And she's a little, you know. He twirled a finger next to his ear. No sense starting off on the bad side of the one who's next in line for the throne. Plus, as baddie as she is, she's a sharp cookie. The scarecrow perked up. She's smart, and she's to be queen? Do you think she'd talk to me about ruling? The monkey shot him a scornful look. Lulu earned our respect, he said. Respect or no respect, the other monkeys were busy arguing with Lulu, but she had at least had their attention. Why should we fight? What's in it for us? One of them ventured. I'll see to it personally that everyone's banana ration is increased, Lulu said confidently, and extra holidays after we've won. You don't have the authority to do that, another monkey pointed out. Lulu didn't miss a beat. Not yet, she said. But do any of you doubt me? You listen to me because you know I'm heading for big things, and I'll reward the monkeys who support me. She glowered menacingly at the monkeys who came down to her summons. And I'll never forget the monkeys who don't, she added, so it's best not to cross me. The monkeys conferred among themselves briefly, and the first monkey who had spoken stepped forward. We'll help, he said. The scarecrow thought he saw a flicker of relief in Lulu's eyes, and, one, and he wondered if she was really quite as confident as she seemed. He wondered if it meant more to appear certain than to be right. Glad to see you know what's best for you, she said. She turned to the lion. We can transport you into battle, but you'll have to assemble the troops, she told him. The lion nodded. Find the best fighters in the forest, he ordered Cornelius. Tell them we head for the Emerald City at dawn. Cornelius nodded and dashed away. Once again, the scarecrow had been left out, and if he was honest with himself, he had to admit that he was dealing with a different kind of smarts. Lulu had established herself with bravado and in and an intimidation. The scarecrow had never practiced either of those arts. He was better with facts and figures, but now that they were standing over a makeshift map of the palace and the grounds that one of the more talented monkeys had etched in the dirt, he felt like he should be ready to step up. Only he hadn't read a book on cartography yet, and he was unfamiliar with the logics of monkey flight. He absolutely hated that. The monkeys ignored him completely as they discussed wind currents and angle of approach, and even the lion seemed to have forgotten he was there. He might as well be back in that field tied to a post for all the good the wizard's gift was doing for him. He knew he could find the answer, if only he had enough time. If only he had his books. Why hadn't he at least tried to save a text in theoretical military strategy when he'd fled the palace? Suddenly, a bright pink tinted fl light flashed in a distant part of the forest. The scarecrow leaned forward, peering into the trees. In a few seconds, the light flashed again, but this time it didn't vanish. It flickered through the trees like pink firelight. The scarecrow looked back to see if anyone else had noticed. They hadn't. I'll go see what that is, he said unnecessarily. No one stopped him, or even looked his way, as he stepped out of the clearing and began walking toward the light. This time, the way through the forest was somehow easier. The trees seemed to be making room for him as he crashed through the underbrush. He tripped once or twice, but never fell, and the light grew steadily larger. It was almost as if whatever ha the... Whatever the light was, it wanted him to find it. After a few more minutes of walking, he reached a gap in the trees and saw the source of the light. It was a woman, although her face was so youthful and flawless that he couldn't have begun to guess her age. She was wearing a simple pale color dress in a color somewhere between eggshell and rose, and her long golden hair tumbled around her sol sh shoulders in loose curls. She was the one glowing with that strange magical light, the scarecrow realized. It filled the air around her like a cloud, 
and he came toward her and she smiled, looking at him, up at him through her long eyelashes, with strangely familiar crystal blue eyes. Hello, Scarecrow, she purred. Her musical voice was as sweet as honey. It's so good to see you again. If he had a jaw, it would have dropped. Glinda? he asked in disbelief. Glinda giggled, reaching out her manicured hands to him. It's been so long, she cried, hugging him close. She smelled like jasmine and something even sweeter, so sweet in fact that it was almost rotten. But what are you doing here? the scarecrow asked, bewildered. Tin is too far away to help us, she said. And the lion? Well, there's a reason I'm coming to you first, but I'm not sure I want to tell you what it is. It might... She paused, her eyelashes fluttering again. It might hurt your feelings, she said seriously. I don't understand, the scarecrow said. Why are you in the lion's forest if you don't want to see him? What would hurt my feelings? Glinda took a deep breath. It's just that the lion isn't very clever, she said. Not like you, Scare. Is it all right if I call you that? Uh, I, anyways, I felt so much more in common with you than I did with the lion and the tin woodman. Not that you're not wonderful, but you're the one who's asked for a brain and got one, and I have always been something of an intellectual. The scarecrow was so happy, he hardly knew what to say. Then you think I've been doing a good job? He asked anxiously. You take me seriously. Of course I take you seriously, Glinda said immediately. That's why I've come to help. I knew what happened in the Emerald City, and I've dealt with Ginger before. You have? Oh, yes. She comes from the West. She's always been power-hungry and quite mad. I know she'd do something like this sooner or later, though I never dreamed she'd have the nerve to try and unseat a ruler as strong as you. But I know her, and she won't stop at the throne. She'll move out across the rest of Oz, destroying everything in her path. We must stop her and regain the throne, and I can help you. That's why I've come back. The Scarecrow hardly knew what to say. Glinda was a witch, he knew, but he never knew a witch to get much more involved in politics than enslaving the Winkies for her own ends, or controlling the Winged Monkeys with a magic cap like the Wicked Witch of the West. Not that Oz really had politics before, just the witches battling it out. But that wasn't political. That was something else. Was she talking about using magic to defeat Ginger? And if so, was she really that powerful? And where had she come back from? She was hiding something, of that much he felt sure. But he couldn't begin to guess at what it was, or if she was holding something back because she thought that he wouldn't be able to bear it. He hadn't been upset by her comments about the lion, had he? Why was she trying to protect him? You doubt me, Glinda said, a hint of coolness in her voice. No, of course not, the scarecrow protested. It's just that everything is changing so quickly. The lion and the winged monkeys want to go to war tomorrow, and I think they have the wrong idea. We should be using strategy to get rid of Ginger, not brute force. She's already shown she's powerful and ruthless. He raised his hands in a helpless gesture. But they won't listen to me, and I don't see how you and I can stop them by ourselves. We won't, Glinda said calmly. We'll wait for them to fail, as you know they will. When they're ready to see their way is the wrong way, they'll listen. But we have to warn them. If they go into battle tomorrow, they could be hurt or even killed. Casualties are in inedible in war, Glinda said. Then that previous coolness creeping back in. If I'm going to help you, Scare, I have to know you're willing to do whatever it takes, even if that means sometimes people you care about get hurt. We're past the point of protecting everyone from danger now. Don't you see that? Her voice grew urgent. Danger is here, Scare. We don't. We have to do what's necessary, or even more people will be lost. Do you understand? Tomorrow, I want you to hide during the fighting. You're a thinker, not a fighter. I need you to be strong and clever. I need you to stay alive. Glinda pulled a glowing pink bottle out of thin air and handed it to Scarecrow. Drink this tomorrow, she said. It keeps you hidden and safe. I can't drink, the Scarecrow said bewildered. Trust me, Glinda replied. Obediently, he tucked the bottle into one of his pockets. I just want to go back, 
the scarecrow said, his mind reeling. I want Oz the way it was, before any of this happened. He sank to the ground and put his head in his hands. It's all so much. Glinda crouched down beside him and put a gentle hand on his shoulder. You have to be strong now, she said in his ear. There's no other way. I, you know I'm right. And of course he did. She was so strong, so sure. There was something about her that was so persuasive he forgot all about his questions. He'd let the lion and Lulu go into battle in the morning. It wasn't as if he could stop them. And if Glinda really was right, they'd lose, just as he'd thought. But what will we do after tomorrow? he asked. How will we come up with a plan? I knew you'd think of something, Glinda said. You always do. He sat up a little straighter. Did he really? He wasn't sure, but if Glinda said he did, it must be true. She's a witch, and she knew even more than he did. Her powers were mysterious and apparently far stronger than he would ever guess. Of course, he said. You're right. I'll think of something. I know I can count on you, she said, and he felt a glow of pride that matched the radiant light emanating emanating from Glinda. It's best that we keep my return from the south a secret for now. The others will be too surprised that I'm back in Oz and wielding magic again, and the less distraction we have right now, the better. No matter how clever you are, it's clear that the Lion and Lulu won't listen to you until their own foolish plan has failed. When the time is right, I will reveal myself, and you'll tell them the details of our brilliant plan. Shouldn't I be planning a way to convince them you're right before they go to war tomorrow? The scarecrow asked. Glinda frowned the tiniest of frowns. The lion asked for courage, not brains, she said. He won't listen until he has no other choice. There's no other way. Nothing Glinda was saying quite made sense, but every time he tried to think about it, that strange, sinister feeling in the back of his brain stirred, and he for forgot his doubts again. After all, why was he questioning Glinda? She was an all-powerful witch, and a good one, too. She'd only ever helped him when Dorothy had traveled with them in Oz. No, she was on their side. There was no doubt about that. Her new brain was, wasn't was powerful enough yet to keep up with hers. He was reluctant to send his friend and the lion subjects into danger, of course. But if she said there was nothing else they could do, she might... She had to be right. She wanted to avoid bloodshed just as much as he did. She was a good witch, after all. Seeing his argument, Glinda leaned in and gave him a kiss on the cheek. The cloth felt warm where her lips had been, and she pulled away. Be clever, she said, and be strong. I will return tomorrow. The pink light flashed once, and she was gone. The scarecrow stared in the dark forest, thinking hard. It would be up to him to save the day when the lion and Lulu had failed. He couldn't let them down, and as importantly, he wanted Glinda to know she'd made the right choice to trust him. You don't fail a woman like that. He said aloud in the dark, not even once.